These are the plaintiffs, Valerie and Martin Peoples. Valerie says they rented the front apartment of a two-apartment building from the defendant, who lived in the back apartment. As it turned out, she has a deep-seated problem with men, and they were kicked out with no place to live. They're suing this strange woman for every penny of the $7,273.19 they're owed. This is the defendant, Janora Maley. She says she rented an apartment to the plaintiffs for three years, and in that time, they continually broke the rules, so she said to them, y'all gotta go. They installed a satellite dish on her roof without asking. She ended their tenancy, returned their security, and certainly doesn't owe them over seven grand. She's accused of leaving a couple homeless. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,386 for damages and rent owed. All parties, please take your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable oh. Judge Marilyn Leon is now presiding. Oh, Judge Marilyn Leon. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Okay. Miss Peoples and Mr. Peoples, you're suing your former landlord, Ms. Maley, for $7,273 and some change that you say she owes you because she kicked you guys out and left you homeless. And you're counterclaiming for damages, but you had already returned their security deposit. So let's hear what happened. Uh, who wants to talk first, Ms. Peoples or Mr. Peoples? Mr. Peoples. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, July 22nd, when this first started, uh, I got off of work at two o'clock. And, um, you know, I always have this rug in front of my front door. So I know if somebody coming in or out. When why, why does the rug tell the you if somebody came in or out? We know that Gnora have a key to the house. And it's like, if anybody come in through the front door, we know that somebody entered yeah, in and the rug be pushed back. Okay. When I, I realized that the bottom of the bar door wasn't locked, I called my wife and I asked her, I said, well, baby, did you leave the front door open or anything like that? She told me that she was not sure. So she said, well, let me call Gnora, send her a message because we know she wanted to come in and look up in the attic or whatever. So I happened to come outside and I seen her come in the gate and I was on the porch and I was asking her, did she come in? But then she screamed at me and say, you get back, you know, you get away from me. Don't approach me like this and stuff well, like how that. How did she feel you were approaching her? Because you made it sound like you were having a glass of lemonade on your porch and just asked. How was it that she feels you were approaching her? Were you walking towards her? Were you yelling at her? What was going on? No, I just I just asked her a question and she screamed at me, you know. Saying, she don't said, come at me, no. step back. Okay. Yeah, and I never walked up to her and I'm looking at her like, oh my God. And um, I'm like, wow. And the next thing I know, my wife, she happened to call me and she said, baby, she called the, um, the police on you. I'm like, oh my God, she called the police on me. So when the police, the sheriff's family came, and they talked to they talked to us and everything, and I explained to them what happened and everything. So I said, okay, sir, we finna go over here and talk to her. So when he came back, I, I I told I told the sheriff myself, I said, it sounds like she got a problem with men. I don't understand why she have a problem with me. I'm on the rental agreement. This is what I'm telling the sheriff. So when the sheriff, they went over there and talked to her for a while, and they came back, and the sheriff said, well, sir, Mr. Peoples, you're right. I think she really do got a problem with men. Okay. Well, I don't know if she has she a problem with men, but let me ask her, Ms. Maley, according to you, you know, the, uh, the reason we're talking about this July 21 or 22 event is because everything changed after that. Ms. Ms. Uh, Maley, why don't you tell me what happened that day? Hi, right, Judge Millian. That particular day, I left for work 4.30 a.m. That is not my normal shift, so I was very tired. I wanted to come home and go, you know, get in my house. So prior to that, just to back it up just a little bit, that wasn't the only issue that I've had with the with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peoples. Um, there were other little incidences that happened. This was the antecedent to me giving them a 60-day notice to vacate the premises. I did not kick them out. I gave them a, the required amount following the fair housing laws in regards to removing them from my property. So with that particular day, what happened was I was coming home. I was very tired. 
I it was a just before it was about one ish, two ish, just right up in there because I was sitting in my car before I opened the gate talking on the phone with my friend. And I'm seeing him popping in and out of the window. And I'm like, why is he all in the window? So I'm in the midst of getting out of my car, like literally one foot in, one foot out of my car. And I've always had a one issue that I've always had is like they always are approaching me right when I'm coming home. Like I can't even put my stuff down. Can I turn my car off? Can I get a little drink of water? Something, you know, like give me a minute, you know. So once again, he's right there, right when I'm in the midst of in and out of my car. And he's in, he's, he's still in the doorway. He says, um, did you, did you come in our house? Our, our door was open. And at that point, I, I kept previously backing up just a little bit. I had told the wife that your husband's smart mouth and my smart mouth is not going to mesh up very well because he's going to catch me on the wrong day. And he's just going to get it. I have been always trying to maintain a professional decorum and, and, you know, when I do talk to them to stay like not as raw as I really want to be. So when he said that me being tired, getting up at four 30 in the morning, he could just happen to catch me on the wrong day. And I said, don't start that explicit. And so then when I went to, I continued to get out of my car to close the gate He comes out of his house, pops off the porch, and he's like this to me. And I started screaming. I was like, because he caught me off guard. My peripheral starts here. So when I'm seeing him popping off the porch, and I'm like, hold up. What are we doing here? So I started screaming because I don't have nothing else. All I I have is screaming. So I started screaming like, you need to back up explicitive, extreme, lots of explicitive. I'm pretty sure the whole entire neighborhood heard me because – you popped off the porch on me and you're like this. There is no reason for you to right. be standing this close to me in the midst of COVID added to that. So they're on a month to month at this point, right? They're not, they don't have a lease. Yes. And on then month to month. you, so you give them 60 days notice that they need to vacate. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Now you, uh, Ms. Peoples are suing for lost wages. What is that about? I had to leave my job that day to come home. Because she said she didn't like the tone of Martin's voice that he was talking. And the, the guy, they had to reschedule and come back to get insulation. When we first moved there, there was no insulation. There was no window sills. There was no rubbering around her house. There was no rubbering around the window sills. And there was no insulation in the attic. If it was not for us, she would not never have it. I'm trying to understand your lawsuit. She gave you 60 days and you moved out when? We moved out. We started moving out October the 26th and we was completely gone by November the 1st. Okay. Now your 60 days would have taken you to the end of November, correct? Yes. Okay. But you chose to leave earlier, which is fine. Did you give her notice that you were leaving or did she just find the truck outside? Yes. Yes. I sent her a text message. So you sent her a text message that said, I'll be leaving in 30 days. No, not exactly. But she wanted her keys within 30 days. So that's what we did. So you have $7,000. Well, what happened with the security deposit? When you guys moved out, did she, did she want to keep the security deposit? Well, a little bit. Yes, she did. Then Mr. Peoples talks to you, Ms. Maley, and says what? First of all, they didn't move. Uh, they didn't move out on uh, November first. They moved out completely the third. Okay. So they stayed three days into November. Okay. So what does he um, say about the security the premise, deposit? Basically, we're honoring you, giving you your keys. Honor us with our deposit back, and we can move on with our lives. So I was like, good because of what happened on the 31st of October. I was like, I don't, I, well, before the 31st, I was already done. So but when the 31st happened, I was really done. Um, so I was like, you know what? Take your 1450 and just get out of my life. Just just go away. Just, I, I cannot express how much so I Mr. want So Mr. Peoples, you did, you, did you say to her, uh, give us back our security and we'll all go our separate ways? No, I didn't say it like that at all. How did you say it? But, well, I have the text right here. I can just read, read the text. It. Read it to it me. Said, um, okay, November 3rd, her. Are uh, these things left on the side of the house trash? I have your deposit ready when I get the keys and clear the house. And then I reply, the place is clean. 
it shouldn't be a problem for us to get our deposit or just give cash or money over to please. Then she replied again, you will get your money. I don't trust the situation to give cash. I don't need anyone to make us sing like the other day. Well, let's talk about the other day. Just, so that that's what you're referring to that happened uh, in October, correct? So you guys are moving yes. out, and what was it? Let's see. Let's let's take a little peek at. Uh, let's Can I see. say this? Another thing. Um, no, right now I want to watch this uh, video. I got this video. Every minute. Oh, yes, I don't want my wife to fight you, okay? Right, 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 Was that what you meant by your mouth, Ms. Maley? Hey, stop. This stop. is when they're moving stop. the car. Stop. 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 Let me go. Let me go. Go get crazy. Do not say stop. Let me go. Do not say stop. Let me go, Mike. Stop. Mike, let me go. Stop. How long have you been married? Six years. How long have you been together? Seven. Seven. Boy, does that man know you. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> um, I really am trying, time. though, oh. to understand your lawsuit. And I'm, you're going to have to educate me here, Ms. Peoples. Your lost wages, you say it were for sitting around waiting for repair people to come. Your first and last month's rent at your new place. Why would she owe you your first and last month's rent at your new place? Because I thought, for, for a fact, I know that we good tenants, and I know that we don't do anything wrong. I never, we never disrespect, we never disrespected Miss <laughs> Gailey. I paid her all on the first. Okay. She gave us our notification on the second. Miss Maley, you have to stop. And uh, I kept I'm around sorry. the area real clean. Yeah, but what is what difference does it make? You could be Mother Teresa, and if you don't own the place, you don't own it. You don't own it. So the only rights you have as tenant, wait a minute, listen to me. The only right, see, when you come to court, what you're saying is that other side did me wrong. They cost me money and they have to pay because they cost me money because they did me wrong. So you have to show a duty that she owed you that she breached, okay? Um, otherwise, you're just saying, hey, I want money, so make her pay me, and it's like robbery. You know, you, there's something she has to have done wrong. So she has to owe you a duty and then have breached that duty. What duty does a landlord owe a month-to-month -month tenant other than adequate notice? The answer to that is no duty. So she has to give you the 60 days. That's the only duty she has, and she gave you the 60 days. It's unfortunate, but because you don't want to move, you liked living there or whatever, or you like whatever, you didn't want the hassle of moving. But if you don't own the place, you don't get to make that call. She gets to make that call. So why would she end up owing you first and last month's rent to the tune of $3,500, $1,745, the security deposit for your new place, which if she paid, you'd get it back at the end <laughs> if there's no chance. A credit check that the new place made you do, the U-Haul rental, utility transfer fees. But, you know, how? why would she have to pay for your new place when she gave you the notice? Because she claimed that we was the nuisance, like we was the bad ones, we was the problem, but we was not the problem to her. You know, she inconvenienced us right about now, mm. even though she said that we the problem, you know, she put the place up for rent way before we even moved out. And to us, I have to look online and see that where I'm standing is up for rent. You know, but it's like, is that fair to us as tenants? Where do yes, the tenants' rights come it is. From? It is. It's fair to you as tenants. She gave you exactly what you're entitled to. She didn't say, move out tomorrow. She didn't say, uh, you know, she didn't change the locks on you. She didn't cut your heat. She didn't cut your electricity. She didn't do any of the things that they're not allowed to do. She gave you the notice the way she's supposed to give. What is this Amazon personal package holdup? What's that? Oh, I, okay. I had a package that was delivered. Oh, there, there we go. Is. You want what's in the package, right? No, not no more. Her hand's been on it. You know the package isn't open, right? No, she got dogs. She got Send a dog. It, just write return to sender. Uh, do whatever you want with it. I guess, because you have dogs. Okay, fine. We're done on that. I'm considering it abandoned. Now, let's talk about your counterclaim against them, Ms. Maley. What's going on with your counterclaim? Explain to me. With the, the cleaning that needs to be done, they smoked marijuana. The soot on the walls and the blinds and everything, is, is, it needs, they need to be wiped down and, you know, painted. So I was 
willing to eat that and, you know, the little bit of damages and cleaning that needs to be done just so I won't have to deal with them anymore. Well, okay, so now that they didn't go away and they filed an $8,000 lawsuit against you, you've decided why should you eat the damages. So let's talk about the damages. Yeah, what am I looking at in this picture? These are blinds, and what happened to the blinds there? I don't know what that is. It's also on the floor. You can see the soot. If you, if you zoom in, you can see the soot that stuck to the dust and the, the oils from the marijuana smoke. And you can see the dust and, and it's stuck. It's not just dust. It's, it's with the oils with the marijuana smoke. That's the bathroom, the towel bar. But they left nothing when they left. They left me no, no, with no towel bar. Also, if you zoom in, you can see the caked up dust mixed with marijuana smoke damage. You're counterclaiming for $500 for holes in the wall repair. What holes are you referring to? That is in the bedroom where they put the TV on the wall. Um, they did a horrible patch job um, where they were probably looking for studs or whatever. I don't know. I want to respond to... Uh, yes. There's a lot something. of stuff in there that we don't recognize. And then as far as the, the marijuana smoke, yes, I do smoke weed, but um, marijuana smoke, when you smoke a blunt, you only get residue of the back of the blunt. Um, smoke do not cause residue and oil on the walls. Okay. Let me tell you what mo most of her counterclaim against you guys involves November rent, because her premise is this. You didn't give her notice that you were leaving before the end of November. Now, she gives you notice you guys have a right to live here for 60 more days uh, you got you got two months to find another place to live. And then you guys end up leaving in the middle of that. But the idea behind notice is that you're giving the other side a chance to find another tenant without eating a mortgage payment. So that's the idea. So that's a tenant has to give 30 days notice. A landlord has to give 60 days notice in your state. So she gives you the 60 days notice. And then I don't see any proof of you telling her hey, this is the day we're going to leave, and that day being 30 days away from when you're saying it. Because you didn't give her 30 days notice. You up and left in the middle of the 60 days. And that puts her at a disadvantage because now she has a month where she can't rent. So unless you're able to prove to me that you gave her 30 days notice, you probably should have left well enough alone because it sounds like she would be entitled to November's rent. So what is that? That's a this handwritten is piece of paper. I wanted to give her. I know. It's all about what you wanted to do as opposed to what you did. But that doesn't qualify as notice. A notice is a certified letter, which she doesn't have, you know, she doesn't accept it tough on her. You can prove you gave it. A text, an email, something that you show that you've put someone on 30 days notice, which you don't have. Okay. She's entitled to November rent. As far as the damages, I think that they're less than what she's saying. I'm going to order you guys to pay November rent plus $400 in damages is $1,966 in damages based on the pictures well, that I have just seen with my own eyeballs. Good hey, luck, folks. Do Adios. Don't be Well, there is one happy defendant. No kidding. It looks like the plaintiffs were so upset that they have left the courtroom. Ms. May Lee, let me, let me, you are one happy, happy person, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I must say, you know, you're such so sweet, but you're, you're a pretty trash talking woman too. You know, that was some, some pretty heated. You know arguments. what? You know, there's only so much I could take after four years of so much that I can take. I couldn't take it anymore. So... You know, it, it is what it is, and it was what it was. At the end of the day, they were wrong. Anyway, congratulations. <laughs> You're as happy as a, per as a litigant I've seen in a long, long time. Good for you. All right, Harvey, what do you think? So, Doug, the judge talked about the fact that this is a month-to-month -month tenancy, and therefore you need to give 30 days notice, and that's it, and you can kick the tenants out, period. That is true with one exception. There are cities that have rent control laws that sometimes even limit what a landlord can do in a month-to-month -month tenancy. So if you want to find out, go online and check to see what your city or state provides. Do your daughters call you very often to get advice from you? I know you have three daughters, so do any of them call one parent more than another for advice? Uh, 
Oh, well, I don't know, John. Can you answer that uh, one? Is I, that... My phone doesn't ring. I'm like one of those lonely Maytag repairmen just waiting <laughs> for it to ring. So they don't call me. They call, they you, call con- you to say hi. Uh, well, no, you, they call me when the toilet's broken and they want to know how to fix it. The car broke down and they want to know how to fix it or what to do. Uh, there are vermin or mice or, or some kind of <laughs> bugs in the house and how what does she do to get the, that's the kind of stuff or maybe need cash right. but because they, they know call, I won't give it to them right? no they call you for everything they do you're like you know they do you're their psychologist like, well, and therapist and, once you are an empty nester one of the things that happens is that you you know you're afraid that you have this ongoing fear that your children are not your children and they're not going to need you because you've defined yourself so right. long as their mother right as their parent and you're, um, you want them to need you. And then mm-hmm. you really don't because if you did your job right, they should be able to move forward without your sure. constant help. But boy, I love it when they call they for call advice. You, all, <laughs> you, you talk to your daughters every day, pretty I much. No, right? I, we text, every at a minimum we text every day. Uh, even though I would prefer to talk to them 20 times a day, maybe right. not 20, but I would prefer right. to hear their voices. There's a connection uh, involved um, with text that even that much. It's like someone yeah, you're squeezing right. your hand, Reminding which you is nice. Yeah. etc. You know, a, a few weeks ago, a month ago, maybe two months ago, when our youngest was going through that little bit of a separation period with her then boyfriend, um, she called me because you were on the bench here <laughs> and I was in your chambers and you were working. And it was like, it was hard because, you know, it was one of those calls that... Uh, you usually handle right and then if i, I call correctly you shoved the phone in my face and said call your daughter yeah when you came back yeah i did you know i kind of like tried to change the subject i guess no, no I that's not no, what I, you do no i know i talked about it a little bit and you know did the best i could